because all physical elements of it have been hidden from the eyes of mankind. In agenda number two, you're going to see the warnings that the Lord gave. I'm going to talk about species. But right now, I'm going to tell you this. You need to go back to the drawing board on dinosaur bones. There's proof of giants in the earth of both man and beasts all over the place. They don't mind showing you the beasts that were too big. And they've come up with all sorts of explanations. Well, this happened 40 million years ago when the oxygen was all over the earth. And the earth was at one point under a canopy of water, too, because there were books written about it. There's a turquoise set of stones with writing in them. Now, the only way that can happen is that the writing, the way the writing was done, it actually settled in to the crystal itself as it was forming. And it takes a long time for that process to finish because the writing is compressed, but enough where you can make it out. Now, figure that one out. Sumerian text being the oldest? No. Listen, if the world has a consensus on something like that, they're pushing an agenda. And I'm telling you that the second agenda is underway. Sadly enough, and if people can't even see this, the real world. They say, well, I live in the real world. No, you don't. You live in a designed world that keeps you captive. And that's why you're not free. Everything is designed by mankind carefully. They're inspired to build mechanisms of control, which we call entertainment. Oh, you don't think entertainment is a form of control? Really? If I say gargoyle, what is your reference for the word? What is your reference for that word? Huh? What is it? What is it? If I say vacation, what is your reference for that word. What comes into your mind? Something mankind has given you. Think about it. When you are scared of a noise you never heard before, what comes into your mind? Every scary situation causes an emotional feedback problem in your flesh. Listen, these things are masters of flesh. You need to understand that. They're, they're, they're also masters at biology. They can manipulate God's creation, but they have lost their spiritual authority. So they really can't do anything to you concerning spiritual things. But you let them in and you let them do things because you're not walking in the spirit. See, when you walk after those things of the flesh and do mind those things of the flesh, guess what you're doing? You're following them. You're following their influence their inspiration all these great men that you call great in the earth that are inspired like all these scientists and Einstein and all these folks that are celebrated they all admitted they were inspired of something that was not God and of all the knowledge they had and of their lives devotion to what they did what did they actually produce Let me tell you what happens, because humanity and those great people will always be set up as innocent in your eyesight. These things, these spirits have been here for a long time. We're not here for a long time, right? So then you have one person like Einstein, you give him something. He devotes his life to it. He makes it plain so that other people can see it. So he's the one handing it out. The other people grab hold of it and take it to another level. They, too, are inspired and controlled to take it in different directions. All the while, these things have equated to weaponry, is what they have, what it has come down to. Control mechanisms. Did it actually go into the... Listen, we're making breakthroughs in space, in the earth, and we can't cure cancer. You know, in 1993, there was a rumor that there had been a cure for cancer. And there was a fight in Congress. I mean a real fight in Congress. A real one. In 1993. No one ever heard a piece of it since. In fact, that was the exact time all these pharmaceutical industries started coming out with everything. Right? 
They don't want you to fix you. Part of agenda number two is that a person lived their life thinking they're going to be delivered. So they devote their life for that cause that they're going to be delivered. That somehow some great thing is coming out of what they're doing. That's a strong delusion and it's only a tiny piece of it. That is amplified through marketing of television, the reality TV that you watch, all these reality shows that make immorality commonplace and disgusting things commonplace. All these things are commonplace so you have been made numb to their true works. Therefore no spiritual discernment concerning the truth. You cannot love the works of your enemy and that thing still remain your enemy. You will no longer see him as an enemy but you will befriend him because of what he created. Hmm? This is what's happening. The second agenda is said to corrupt the spiritual seed of man. And when you know it, the Lord said, Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And in the mind are physical objects. The experiences you've had in your life that affect you every single day of your life. There are things that have happened to you. You thought that a person did something to you. You blamed it on a person. And you lived in error since that time. They know what they're doing. Is it not corrupting a person when the Lord says we war not against the flesh but a principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places and the reason why I say it's the Lord is because all things are inspired by the Holy Spirit which is given by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and it tells you to say things of him anything within Christ it will give you to say so then who did it come from it came from the Word of God don't you know when God speaks right now it is Christ don't you know that Jesus is the Word of God made flesh and dwelt among men so then when God speaks Jesus has spoken do you understand the words of our God is Christ Jesus his word died for you the same word that doomed you died for you and was raised again under a new covenant now you're covered by the blood the blood that was spilt out of the word upon your life that you will not be condemned by what condemned you in the first place that you may finally find life your soul is being redeemed but your flesh is kaput what is the world interested in right now keeping the flesh as fit as can be and living for a long time replacing old parts and all this stuff they teach the propaganda of a long life to enjoy what? To enjoy the world. Not a long life. That you may actually work miracles in the earth or anything like that. No. To live a long life that you may enjoy the world. This is what they're teaching you. To do everything you can to enjoy the world. But the only way to enjoy the world is to be a servant of the system. And only those who are the best servants can enjoy. And to find favor, well then you, you, you really can't have Christ. Because those same ones who help, who are the feet of these kingdoms. They're the foundation of the kingdoms. They always have the greater influence over mankind. And if they do that, they're going to see you from a mile away. And inspire people to give you the cold shoulder. It's happened to you in your life and you cannot deny it. You were the one that was plucked out of your job. You were the one they wrote the letter to. You were the one unfortunate things concerning the world only that happened to you. Haven't you found out yet anybody of the world is not on your side? Haven't you found that out? If they are of the world, they're really not on your side. Haven't you found that out? And you can't point at a person. Because if you point at one person, it's the same thing will come through another. Have you ever had somebody say something to you and then they're out of your life? Three years later, you meet somebody else who says the exact thing the other person said. 
and it gets to you. These are spirits you're dealing with. Things that walk among you. You see, in the Bible it says, uh, these, these men of old have crept in and you weren't aware of them. They feast with you. They're walking among you. They have infiltrated everything and you really don't know what is what. Now, I don't suggest, you, you know, a lot of people say, well, yes, you know, they could have clones. I'm not interested in clones. I'm not interested in a lot of things because your true danger is how these entities can influence your mind. You're the one I'm concerned about. How they get into your head. How they make you waste your time running in circles. How that the Christian populace can't seem to find deliverance. Why can the Christian populace not find deliverance? Because they have adopted too many doctrines. There's only one correct doctrine. And it didn't come from the mouth of men my goodness but all the doctrines most do exercise are passed down through the grapevine through dead people no your doctrine should come from a living one who is Christ Jesus don't live by a doctrine of the dead but the doctrine of the living and that comes from the eternal life giver. Hmm? Not the doctrine of the dead. There is but one doctrine. Those are the words of our Lord. And I'm telling you, these things await you through every crack and crevice. And they are relentless. And they will not stop. They won't go backward. They're doing a permanent work. They're all trying, they're working on agenda two. And most people don't even know about it. But at least you know about it. Is everybody clear on agenda number one? Not by me, but by scripture. How many of you know that God formed the crooked serpent? How many of you know what Leviathan really is? Most people don't know what Leviathan really is. I'm not here to contest with you, but Isaiah did not say it was the same thing most people think it is. The crooked serpent is also the old serpent called the devil and Satan. Leviathan is a description of the works how it happens in the earth. See, in agenda number two, in number one, the dragon actually did have power. In agenda number two, he had to hand the beast his power, his seat, and great authority because he could not do it himself. Why in the world would the dragon give the beast his power, seat, and great authority if he had a power, seat, and great authority? Because of the realm change. You may not know this, but when God destroyed this earth, right, by water, everything began to change, and Jesus sealed that change. Satan was cast out. He cannot freely come back into this domain like he did. So what does he do? He copies himself in the earth, and then he hands over his power seat and great authority. Do you guys see how that works? Jesus said the prince of this world is cast out. Now is the judgment of this world, Jesus says. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. Well, where did he go? Where did he go? Cast out where? See, he can affect you. He can affect you like you think. Through your imagination, he affects you. He is held outside of you. He cannot circumvent your authority, and that's why Jesus said, through his name, all spirits are subject unto you. 
All spirits means all those things in the spiritual realm are subject unto you through the name of Christ. And Christ's name is already established. It's already established. In all spiritual realms, know that name. And if you belong to him, then you walk in authority. It's already established. Right? But when, when the judgment of the world came, Satan was cast out. That's echoed in Revelation. Many people don't believe that. Let me go ahead of myself real quick. Satan has no power. Now that means someone is not telling the truth. Either the people who say Satan has power over you, they're lying, or Jesus is lying. Which one is lying? Because Jesus said, all spirits are subject unto you through the name, through his name. Well, I, I tell you this, but is not Lucifer a spirit? You have the spirit of infirmities. You have deaf and dumbness. You have all these different spirits. You have the spirit of cancer. If you knew what your blood cells were, you would also call cancer a spirit. You would not call it a disease. You would call it a spirit. Why do you think the bloodlines can be corrupted in the first place? You have to ask yourself, not what is the blood, but what's inside the blood? It's more than just DNA. It truly is the life. The life of an individual specifically made for the soul of the spirit of that individual. Why do these spirits chase bloodlines? I'll tell you why. If they're acquainted with your grandmother, then they know the remnants of her blood are in you, and that makes them acquainted with your body. That means you're a compatible vessel for habitation of them that can only be broken by the blood of the Lamb. Now, they come in many different ways. I hate to break this to you. But that, that's called a generational curse when something like that happens. Right? That means you are of a... Let me just break down agenda number one. See, this is why it's going to take a long time. Can I do this without people getting bored? Here it goes. When the Nephilim came into the earth, they corrupted all flesh. Noah survived, but so did some of the Nephilim. After Noah and his sons began to repopulate the earth, many people come to find out many people started to populate the earth again. So then you have these distinct and different races. Each one has a different trait. And within the races, there are markers, genetic markers, showing that they are things of old and not actually human in the first place. Though they call them dormant genes, they see a mixture of things a person is not supposed to have. So then, so then, 80% of the population right now are chimeras. That means a person who has two distinct sets of DNA in them. They're chimeras. So your flesh is mixed up with everything. That's why you can look at a squirrel. I'm not joking in this. You can say, well, that person resembles a, a squirrel. Or that, that person resembles a so-and-so. I'm not joking with you. Because there are certain characteristics that people have that are just like the animals. Because at one time in the flesh, all these things are mixed. Does that mean you're condemned? No, it does not mean you're condemned. Because Jesus came to redeem your soul, but your flesh is kaput. See, when Jesus came, now has come salvation, right? He had to die in the flesh on the cross to do away with the flesh that you may become a new creature in Christ. You had to become a new creature in Christ and he had to undergo these things of the flesh. You can't be born again without Christ and if you're not born again you're gonna end up twice dead you have to be born again and if you're born again then something has to die no wonder the Bible says die to your flesh daily you better not live by the flesh and do those things after the flesh which are evil continually so then all these generational curses and things of that nature were actually carry on traits from further intermingling of men and these things. You may have nothing to do with it, but it could be in your genes. And that's why at certain, here it comes, at certain times in your life, some people can sit still and they get silent and they break out into frustration. Some people are naturally prone for depression. Why? 
Because somewhere in your blood is a compatibility of the spirits that are familiar with your body. They're familiar with your body because they were familiar a long time ago with the bodies of those they intruded upon, passed down from generation to generation. Predicting the character of an individual for the world and for the systems we live in, it's very important that they have your genes to see what you're susceptible to. By knowing that, they can tell if you're inclined to be a warrior or not. If you're inclined to be so-and-so or not. They know what you're inclined to be. There are compatibility algorithms for spiritual entities. <sighs> your flesh is doomed, but your soul is not. And what I'm telling you right now is that the flesh no longer matters. It doesn't matter anymore. It doesn't matter. Your flesh no longer matters. Right? The mother of man, the feminine of man is the earth. But the masculine of man is the spirit of Yahweh God that he put inside, the, called the breath of life. God is a spirit. He doesn't breathe. And so this instinctual urging through all whites, many of us... We repress it or we express it in very weird ways. Others of us, we get more, we get clear. It's all about how clear your physical dirt brain is, your outer mind. Or as the Bible calls it, your carnal mind, your physical brain part of you. The masculine of you is the spirit of God. The feminine of you is your physical and your physical brain. That is of your mother, Mother Earth. But your heavenly father, it takes a father and a mother to raise a child, doesn't it? But the Father should be ruling over your feminine, your mother mind, your outer brain mind. It should be supreme. And when we live more from the Spirit, we start getting more spiritual understanding. Glimpses of things. This is an impulse, an instinct, which comes from your outer mind. And that's what animals live by. This is about living from intuition, inspiration, insight that comes from your Father mind, your Spirit mind. God within you. The ancient Egyptians, the ancient Babylonians, the ancient Assyrians, and all the ancient whites, the ancient whites of India, they all had this God consciousness that would peek out through them and is expressed in the different myths and tales. And there's a reason why there's a unification or commonality between all of this. All the different tales of the white Adamic people that the white Adamic Akumene known ancient world. There's a reason why. There's a self-same consciousness. It just gets expressed in different ways because of how our carnal minds translate the messages from our spirit minds. How a mother interprets what dad is saying. As the Bible says, we're to crucify our, our flesh daily. That doesn't mean your physical flesh. It's all about the flesh brain. The outer brain, the mother brain. Mother must be in subjection to father. The wives are to submit to their husbands. And this is the great mystery. The feminine must submit to the masculine. Today in our society, you see all this craziness and it's femininity, multiculturalism, diversity, feminism, homosexuality, all these spirits of femininity. The feminine is trying to overshadow the masculine. And this is because the masculine will not arise or be allowed to arise. We must submit to the masculine. When the feminine is submitted to the masculine, when the wife is submitted to the husband, there is a harmony and a beauty in the household, in the marriage, in the family, in the community, in the neighborhood, in the society, in the nation. The masculine stands for law and standard. The feminine stands for love and grace. But you cannot have love and grace without law. Or then it becomes meaningless. Willy-nilly love. We just love everybody. Love, 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 love. Means nothing. It has no standard. It becomes meaningless without law and standard. And because Jesus came in that respect, right? Wounded for our iniquity. <laughs> All these things... All these things, 
they took place at the cross, the war in heaven. At the cross, Satan was cast out at the cross. That's why Jesus said, it is finished. Because the prince of the world was cast out. And at the beginning in the book of Revelation, it says the time is at hand. Then it takes you through history. And it talks about the woman with the 12 stars. Do you not know that is the story of salvation? That's what that is. It is the two agendas the dragon had. He couldn't do the one, so immediately he started on the other. Agenda number two and one are spoken of in Revelation. Right? And that's Revelation 12, 7 through 10. You're in the middle of that. Michael does this. Does this explain why some people say things? And yes, it does. It most certainly does. It is, listen, it, if people call it a gift, all these, uh, the, the psychics and things like that, let, I'm not impressed by that. Let me tell you why. You see, Satan does not forecast a future per se. Here's what he does. If you ever notice in a psychic's life, and when they tell something for another individual, that other individual sought out the psychic. Well, if you're seeking a psychic, you're certainly not looking for answers from Christ. And if this happens, you're not really a person of faith. And if you're not a person of faith, then your life can be manipulated. Every single day of your life can be manipulated. And if it can be manipulated to gain favor with an individual, these things will set up each moment of your life in accordance with what they have given somebody because there are who knows how many are out there doing whatever they do. And so they set up these circumstances. And when they happen, they gain the trust of the individual. They're oodin ah, this is how they work. They don't impress me. I mean, if, if we were all invisible, you could tell anybody anything, and then we call each other and say, yeah, let's set this up. We're going to do it at so-and-so time, just like so-and-so said. Right? That's what they're doing. That doesn't impress me. It doesn't. It does not impress me at all. Right? To know someone's future that you're doing. And all the circumstances, oh, they're going to meet someone. Right? Even the bad stuff. Oh, they may have a car accident. All these foolish things that they say. They're setting those things. That doesn't impress me. Once you know about the spiritual realm, those things do not impress you. They don't do an eye or anything else. But then some people's families. Right? They have become conduits. Maybe their great-great-grandmother was a conduit for these things. And so it's in the blood, passed down from generation. It may skip a few to generation. But what can halt it in its tracks is the acceptance of Christ. The greatest call in this earth are upon those who have the greatest curses. Redemption follows them everywhere. Hmm? It does. Because Jesus died for all of us. But there's certain, now th th this part you need to know about. There are certain individuals who are not what you think they are. They have crept in. They're spots in your feasts. Clouds without water. Twice dead. Right? Th these folk, these things are of old and they are, they are destined to be condemned. This is very foretelling of what walks among you now. Now that was stated in, in, in the New Testament, in the book of Jude. Can we go to Jude real quick? If I'm not mistaken, we're going to do this. Can we do this one more time? Can we? Beloved, it, it says this in Jude one four. For there are certain men crept in unawares. That means you didn't know about it. Right? Now, if somebody comes in that's rotten, you know about that person that's rotten. We're not talking about that. Listen, for there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Now, how can before times of old be ordained to condemnation the fallen? They are of old. Ordained because they are doomed. And when you know a Jew talks about them at the end. So let's continue to read so you get this. They are ungodly men. What does he call them men? Myra Clay. 
ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. You know what? When you look at this, I want you to think of something. They will come into a congregation of faith, period, to wreak havoc. Do you know how many Christians there are in the Muslim communities? Right? But they're bound by that faith and they can't break free. And then one little push in a dream. And they renounce all their Muslim activities and everything else because they were called in the first place. To hear the Lord is to be one of His. You cannot hear the Lord if you're not one of His. They don't want you to know that either. To hear the Lord means you're one of His. To actually hear Him. See, those who hear Him respond to Him. When somebody calls your name, what do you do? You turn to the person. Right? You turn to the person. But these folks don't do that. They don't do that. They have crept in without our knowledge, Myra Clay, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, because they did this stuff when they corrupted the earth the first time. Ungodly men they were, turning the grace of God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God. And now in this day they deny our Lord Jesus Christ. So, someone thought it would be a great idea to bring in millions of Muslims from the Third World into Europe. These Muslims form communities where they spread the same ideology and culture of their homelands, but with all the benefits of living in Western civilization. Every so often, a member of their community will kill innocent Europeans. The governments vow to arrest those who are responsible for the attacks. Then another month passes, and a Muslim mass murders innocent Europeans. The media says that the motive is unknown, but it definitely had nothing to do with Muslims. Then another month passes, and a Muslim mass murders innocent Europeans. A European man points and says, it was one of them, they did it, and he's thrown in jail. The schools and colleges decide that more needs to be done to eradicate racism. Then another month passes, and Muslims mass murder innocent Europeans. Peace rallies are organised, Europeans create supportive hashtags, fly their flags at half-mask and mourn the loss of life. The governments decide that they will import more Muslims into Europe. Then another month passes and Muslims commit mass molestations and rapes of European women and children at festivals. The police try to cover it up, but when it comes to light, the government tells women and children to dress more discreetly so as not to provoke rape. Then another month passes and Muslims mass murder innocent Europeans. The government says that it will take a zero tolerance attitude towards terrorism and racism. And this is how Muslims destroy Europe. They send people out from their communities to kill us and we just have to take it. These attacks won't decrease over time, they'll only get worse. It's like fighting a war where you invite the enemy from a foreign nation to live amongst your people. And when they start killing innocent people, you say, this has nothing to do with anything. It's just crazy people doing crazy things. Nothing to do with Islam, nothing to do with Muslims, nothing to do with the importation of millions of third world people. It's just a human problem, something that can only be fought with tolerance and understanding. So the plan is that Europe will import more Muslims. And the Muslims already there will have high birth rates, and it won't be long before Muslims don't need to play this whole moderate Muslim act. They'll just come out and say, yeah, we want to conquer the West and there's nothing you can do about it. And when they do say that, the media, governments and school systems will fully support them. But there's one thing I didn't mention. There are millions of European men and women who don't want this. There are millions of Europeans who love their country and their culture and their people. And they don't want their nations to turn into the third world. So you can be one of those people who sees Europeans being slaughtered by Muslims and says, well, we kind of deserve it. Racism is a real problem. Multiculturalism has been greatly beneficial. White people are bad, Muslims are good. But you're just repeating the same crap you heard on TV or in government. It's really unintelligent and boring. History will remember you as the whiny traitors. And to the Europeans speaking out or fighting back, despite the hatred directed at them, 
they will be remembered as the heroes who saved Western civilization. How did they do that? tell you why they have made the world your salvation the truth is we pray to Christ to win favor in the world in a lot of cases Lord forgive us all for doing that we do it every we do that too much we do it a lot we did do it one time is one time too many now don't be offended by this statement because at some point in time when you didn't have the funds did you not ask the Lord that he grant you favor to get money? Well, and even Jesus said you cannot serve two masters. You're going to love one and hate the other, right? You cannot serve both God and mammon is what he says. Can't do that. So God, in a sense, only, only compared himself to one thing in the man, uh, minds of men. Money. Why did he say that? I'll tell you why. Because... God is our provider, but if you have money, you can provide for yourself. It is the ability to have provision. God is our healer, but if you have enough money, somebody out there has a skill set to, to, to heal you too. So money, he compared himself to you, didn't he? He said you cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve both God and mammon. That's what he said. Right? In his hands, Phyllis says, money answers all things. Now, you know what? Even that scripture can, Phyllis, you may not know this, but if you read that whole thing in context, yeah, I'm going to paraphrase. It says, for a foolish and dumb king, money answers all things. But only for a foolish and dumb king, right? Money answers all things. Isn't that funny? And I hear that statement all the time when people say money answers all things. No, it does not. For a foolish and a dumb king, it does. Not for a wise king, for a foolish and dumb king. You can go back and read that in context, you'll start laughing. You'll say, oh my goodness, they got this all wrong. They should have never picked that scripture out. Never, ever, ever. That's why you have to read things in context. You have to read the chapter before, the chapter, and the chapter after. And then you see the whole story, you'll say, oh my Lord, have mercy. Like when it says, well, a man robbed God. Well, how have we robbed you? In tithe and offerings. You know who he was talking to? Read the beginning of the book. To the priesthood. The priesthood can rob God in tithes and offerings because they were the receivers of it. Only the one who receives tithes and offerings 
can rob God. My goodness. And sometimes we don't read in context. And it's used as a some sort of control mechanism over us. This is why we have to get back down to business. I mean the truth. So yes, we're going to talk about the fallen angels. The little species some people out there know about. Or you think you know about. All of them are the same to me. They're not supposed to be. God's angels do not creep around corners. They don't just come at nighttime. Right? They don't do those things. One of the attempts when ancient aliens first came out, it, that show was born through hatred. Most people don't even know it. Haven't you heard them say a resounding statement the entire time? Listen, I'm going to tell you the statement on ancient aliens, and I warned about ancient aliens before it ever came out. I did. I really did. I'm not gloating on myself. I'm just telling you. <sighs> One out of every 3,000 things I say may be right. How about that? They say this one thing all the time in ancient aliens. It was not God. It was misunderstood technology. That's what they say all the time. Or they'll say it wasn't angels. It was extraterrestrials. Oh, duh. Angels don't come from Earth. Do they? Angels are not from Earth. That's the funny part. Extraterrestrial means coming from another place. You see how they miss the words? It wasn't an angel. It was an E.T. Well, you dodo. Why would you say that? And see, what they're doing is mincing words. They're mincing words. And because people's paradigm is fixated on life out there, right? They're more apt to believe things will come from out there, helping humanity, than to believe the truth. They're coming from the pit, and they'll be released on the surface of the earth. Because do you know what the word sting is? Those things that come out of the bottomless pit, the word sting means something different than what you understand. Even the five months means something different than what you understand. Anyway. So we have established a few things. And it's only the first part of agenda number one. And they failed miserably. But they were still in the earth. And part two is underway. That's why we were talking about the kingdoms in Daniel. Listen, the iron, the, the miry clay and the iron, they will mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they will not cleave one to another. That is inhuman and human mingling. Inhuman and human mingling. Whoever mingles themselves with the seed of men are not men. Now that's not too difficult to comprehend. And they too will have offspring hidden. And they will do something. Because they are released upon mankind. Even those things that come out of the bottomless pit, they only hurt those who don't have the seal of God in their foreheads. Moxie hmm? says, why don't they cleave this time? The first time they took them they took to themselves wives, right? And in, in, in all these all these writings of these ancient societies before the flood it's the same resounding thing. They did have wives, right? And the child would stay with the mother until the age of six, in which case their fathers would come from the stars to take their children and educate them. And then they would come back like 13, 15 years later, right? They took to themselves wives. They came down physically because they can take the form of anything. So they came down physically and they bore, they had children, right? This time they don't need to. That's why we're so advanced in technology and we're so obsessed with DNA. We're so obsessed with DNA because of masters that govern this world. Through their inspiration, we do their dirty work. I'm telling you the truth, we're doing their dirty work. So they inspire mankind for all this technology. For the very reason of mingling their seed with the seed of men. See, they're trying to avoid something and they're using us to do it. 
That's agenda number two. They're trying to escape something and they're utilizing humanity to do it. Now all of you guys have heard about all these so-called abductions. What you haven't heard about are the true ones. And in most cases people will say, well I saw these military folks with something else standing over there. Or I saw this something else and all these lights were around me and a clock and I was on a medical table right and something had big eyeballs or something like that correct right and what were they doing well they were taking eggs and sperm is it was what they say what were they doing well they were saying that they're creating you know they had children that look half like us and half like somebody else well, if they say anything, yeah, they said one day we're going to all live together and no one will be able to tell the difference. That was a long time ago. But things like that are weird and crazy, right? Here's the bad part. Why have 40%? 40% of the populace, it is estimated that 40% of the populace consciously goes through that. And at some level they have reported that. They know that through doing data mining on the internet. Why do you think there's an anticipation and a knowing deep within you that it's not all hogwash? In fact, it's quite disturbing to some of you, isn't it? To even entertain the fact that something will have the power to do that. That will be able to, I'm going to say it, sneak into the windows, come in through the windows, climb up the wall. Who comes in through a window after they climb up a wall? These are clandestine figures. They do it at night. Hmm? Don't they? Some of you folks. You've had things that happen to you, that's right, Mayors, as a thief. When you don't expect them, there's no defense against them. They mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they will not cleave. They extract material from humans, the seed, and of themselves, and they mingle the two. Hmm? They're spiritual, but they're laden in technology. Walls won't stop them. Desire begins their probing into your life. As soon as you're interested in... Listen, because there's no difference in that than people working with Ouija boards. They have set up a different paradigm of Ouija. A Ouija board is nothing else than you putting your hands on something, talking to a spirit. Now, you guys, have you heard of the damage a Ouija board can do to folks? Hmm? Hmm? Have you guys heard of the damage a Ouija board can do? Have you? It's an invitation to a spirit. And you're, you're, you're giving proof that you desire a spirit to come forth. Right? You can't command or desire a spirit to come forth unless you have authority over it. I'm, I'm telling you something here. Even a Ouija board wouldn't work if you didn't have authority at some level over these things. Right? Now that's an action of a simple tangible, something tangible, which shows your faith in that thing is what you're doing. That's called a ceremony. When your actions match what you believe and you call it forward, then you have a complete statement. That's a ceremony. You invite them in. Well, let me tell you what they've done. The Ouija board, right? That's one thing. But we have ET. And so what they're doing now is they cause people to go by telescopes and to probe the skies with night vision goggles, which is just like a Ouija board. And then the people end up saying, ooh, just come to me and let me see you. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. So the people who believe in ETs who are out there actively searching for them and want to see them up close and personal, what are they doing? They have become a portal into this earth. Those who are playing with all these ghost hunter dumb things with all these old boxes that, that peep, they, there's a problem of in the military services, spirit boxes and all these things, what are they doing? Inviting these spirits in. But the spirit doesn't come through a portal to your right or to your left. 
It comes right through you into the earth. All these things are deceptive. The human being is the portal. You're the authority. You're walking around with keys to shut and open things. And people are inviting things in. Why? Because of entertainment. Entertainment was a necessary key to keep man oblivious to their own true conditions and to teach them to have a desire for the unknown. And everybody likes a good sci-fi story, don't they? And so with your interest in these things, mankind themselves has become a portal and wickedness and iniquity is flourishing in the earth by way of this. And these things that come out of the bottomless pit, the, the angel with the key to the bottomless pit now that's when we talk about agenda number two you're, you're gonna you're, you're not gonna like it but I'm gonna tell you something humanity has to do with that angel with the key humanity does you see there's a key to the bottomless pit hmm? but I love this those things that come out of the bottomless pit they will not touch anybody with the seal of God on the foreheads they were to torment men for five months those who did not have a seal of God on the forehead so guess what they don't want anything to do with anything that belongs to the most high they're gonna touch those and to torment those who have nothing to do with God I don't care if the pit is open I'm gonna be honest with you Because if you belong to Christ Jesus, they have no interest in you. You are sealed with a seal. You know, the Bible says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your mind is in your head. It also says that you're sealed by the blood, that Holy Spirit, right? Correct? Be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. If your mind has to be renewed and the sealing of that is the Holy Spirit that renewal of the mind is becoming the new creature and it began in your head do you really have the seal of God in your forehead you see there huh that's why I don't believe in the statement well I got time to get it right I don't have time to get it right I need to make a choice as things are exposed to me today choose ye this day whom ye will serve don't choose tomorrow that would be like me going to a restaurant and put a sign on the restaurant that says free food tomorrow. Then the folks come back the next day, but the sign still says free food tomorrow. Then somebody comes back the next day and it still says free food tomorrow. In other words, you put something off for tomorrow, you've done nothing. You're not going to do anything. What you do, you do today. Tomorrow is promised to no man. Be reminded, because that is the case, because tomorrow is not promised to any man, guess what? The promises of the living God are for today. If tomorrow is promised to no man, then God wouldn't give you a promise that wouldn't be upon you today. That means he too is not going to do anything for tomorrow, but he does it all today. See, sometimes we can live these foolish lives because of the flesh. The flesh is the one this world has taught you. Well, just manage everything and, and, you know, just do it tomorrow. No, you make a choice today because you're being positioned every single day of your life to make choices. Based upon those choices, you are living or dying. Well, I choose to live with Christ Jesus. So then with every decision I make, and Lord knows I've made some awful decisions over the course of my life, but now, listen, I'm not taking those chances. I stopped that when I grew up a little bit, a little bit more. I choose him today. This conversation, I choose Christ. I choose my Lord and Savior. I choose his will, not mine. His way, not mine. His guidance, not mine. I will not lean onto my own understanding. I refuse. I'm as stubborn as a donkey. <sighs> Didn't he say he would use the foolish things of this world to confound the wise? Well, there you go. There you are. It is foolish to listen to somebody you can't see. Isn't that what they say? Oh, it's foolish. It could be anybody. And they think I'm everybody. It's foolish. 
but we're in the word of the Lord. I'm not interested in what looks right. There's a way that seems right unto man, but it's not. This first agenda, ladies and gentlemen, it's a lot to really, if you go back in your Bible and you're mindful of this, you're going to hear tons of statements by Ezekiel and Isaiah that give reference to the spirits that are working when they utilize the words gods and lords that have been working over top of humanity. If you can understand agenda number one, you're going to see who you're working for in agenda number two. You're working for someone. The question is, who are you working for? But what I mean by that is that you're serving a kingdom with everything that you do. What kingdom do you serve? Because if you're doing something with a doubt of the Savior in your mind, you're serving something else. You're serving the fourth kingdom and not the everlasting kingdom. But the emphasis tonight is this. You're also dealing with an inhuman factor. And they're walking among you. The Bible says, be careful to entertain strangers because you entertain angels unaware. That's a warning. That's not some happy saying. That's a warning. Which means if you're relying upon your discernment, how can you? These men of old have crept in unawares. That same word unawares says, be careful to entertain strangers because you entertain angels unawares. These men, for there are certain men crept in unawares, Jude 1, 4. Do you see the similarity between the two verses? Huh? Hmm? They have crept in unawares. Be careful to entertain strangers. Because you entertain angels unaware. They're talking about the same thing. These were those of old. Ordained to be ungodly men. Turning the grace of God into lasciviousness. And denying the only Lord God. And our Lord Jesus Christ. They were ordained to do that. Why were they ordained to do that? Because they are the fallen they're dead the same ones that were spoken of in Isaiah they're dead they had dominion over us but Jesus said now is judgment of this world now is the judgment of this world now shall the prince of this world be cast out he's gone and in Revelation 12 it gives you it gives you the entire history the dragon Warring with the angels until when? Until when? Until he didn't prevail anymore. Neither was there a place found anymore in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. When judgment came to the earth, boom, that happened. And I heard a loud voice saying, in heaven now has come salvation. That is Jesus. And strength in the kingdom of our God. Listen, that is Christ Jesus now is come salvation that is Christ Jesus and the kingdom of our God that is with Christ it did not come before Christ it was finished after the cross huh can you guys see that it says for the accuser of our brethren is cast down there we go again cast 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 which accused them before our God day and night did you notice in Job he could go to the throne after Christ no no not so come on you guys with me do you understand what this means that means there was a war in heaven but it's finished the dragon and his followers prevailed not, and they were cast where? Into the earth. So yes, you're going to see funny little things in the earth. In this fourth kingdom of iron and part clay, partly strong, partly not. Hmm? A kingdom where knowledge is increased, and it's going to and fro in the earth. 
a kingdom in which secrets are revealed. That's why we have so much science. We actually know how to boil water. We are smart because we have science. And we have figured out some things, yes, we have. Right? Secrets being revealed. Is that not science? Hmm? Hmm. It says, it says this. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. You see, Jesus had to be established. This is it. To overcome him is only by the blood of the Lamb, because he is cast down. He has no dominion over you, because all spirits are subject unto you through the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. That's why Jesus says, die to your flesh daily. My goodness. That's why it was written, inspired by the Holy Spirit. Jesus said it twice. Don't be servants of the flesh which is dead. You guys see how that works? Huh? Therefore, rejoice ye heavens and all that dwell within them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down to you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time he's here. But we have we are victorious. And that's why it was also written that the, the saints of the living God are going to be worn down. The beast was given power to overcome them. He did prevail. This is our time. We're, this is the nature of his winning right now. It is when we fight the good fight of faith in spite of his antics. But we don't lose. He may wear us out because we're growing at such a young age. But we are victorious in Christ. See, the war transferred from the heavens straight here. So guess what? If you're not walking and following Christ, you're going to be a casualty of war. I hope you understand that. This war is on. It, you're in the middle of this war. And the dragon saw that he was cast out in the earth and he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. Christ! And the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she may fly into the wilderness and enter her place where she is nourished for times, times, and half time from the face of the serpent. How many times was Israel delivered? When the temple was destroyed, why weren't all the people of Israel or Jerusalem destroyed at that time? No, that's not what happened. Because they did, in fact, do just that. They went to hiding places that were prepared. Other nations did receive them. And then they came back. Oh, my goodness. You see this? Listen. And after the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood, after the woman, what is water? In the Bible, it says, when Satan comes at you like a flood, right? That means a deluge of problems going out everywhere. It says the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth. He was wroth. He was enraged with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. What is the remnant of her seed? The believers in Jesus Christ. Because this woman happens to be part of the new Jerusalem. Not the flesh Jerusalem, but the new one. The remnant of her seed is the remnant, those believers in Christ that exist today. He's coming to make war, but he cannot prevail against us directly because we are covered by the blood of the Lamb. He has no power over us. He only has power if we're not in Christ. So when we step back into the world, we become powerless and they were destroyed just like Sodom and Gomorrah. Do you see how that works? When Lot's wife looked back, there was no more covering over her. Because where you are turned is where you are growing. That's where you're going. Not growing. Well, I guess you're growing there too. When Jesus calls your name, do you not turn to him? Yes, you do. When you turn to something, do you not begin to walk forward? Yes, you do. When Lot's wife turned around, she turned away from that covering back to Sodom and Gomorrah. So what did she do? She inherited the fate of Sodom and Gomorrah. The dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. First of all, I can't keep the commandments of God, but since I was redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, because I truly accept and believe that Jesus died on that cross and was raised, and he was, he was just punished. 
He was wounded and pierced and bled to pieces and beaten and spit upon. For what? My iniquity. My deeds in this earth. My iniquity. My dark thoughts and everything else. Crucified my Lord. I do not desire to crucify him again. So in my world, it's not very hard to overcome sin when I see that I crucify my Lord again. And through his blood, I am forgiven. I am clean. I am not a breaker of the Ten Commandments, but a keeper of them. Because I follow the Lamb. The only way you can keep the commandments is to be forgiven of all of them. Because if you break one, you've broken them all. But you keep the commandments when you have not broken them. And the only way that can happen is if you repent. And to repent, you have to turn away from and never do again and reside within the blood of the Lamb. That means to make your abode, your lifestyle, your living in Christ Jesus only, not anywhere else. <clears throat> he went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. He couldn't even get the remnant, so what does he do? What does he do? He creates a beast that looks just like him. And then he hands over in Revelation 13 to power, seat, and great authority. He could not do it spiritually, so he made a copy of himself in the earth to get to you. And it is that system that has you oppressed that is wearing you down. You see, Satan cannot touch you, but your brother can. You see how that works? Your brother can. What does that mean? Everybody's going to come up and harm you? No. That's not in their minds. You see, there are limitations. God will never place you in a position beyond that which you can bear, which means if you're going to lose your soul and everything else, you're not going through that situation. Everything in your case, because you abide within the Lamb, is for growth, not for destruction. You won't face those things, but outside of Christ, you should know that the dragon is after you, and he will not stop till he consumes your soul. So if you walk in mind those things of the flesh, what are you? You are corrupted. Even for a split second, you can open yourself up. And believe me, you know why fences are around the sheep? And if they breach that fence... What are they doing? They're going out into the territory of which they were found. They're being kept in by the fence. The fence is good. They go beyond that fence. They could easily be eaten and devoured. Jesus set up a fence and allows that fence to stay. The sheep don't like the fence. They see it as a limitation. Jesus put that fence up there for a reason. God put it up for a reason. What is that fence right now to us? It is Lucifer. It is the dragon, it is the beast. And what does it do? It reminds us that if we don't have our abode within Christ, that's what's waiting on us. Hmm? That's what it reminds us of. Does it not keep us? We're not people that just listen to everything God says. No, no, we learn the hard way, don't we? We become wise because we suffer. Never enough to take you, but certainly enough to show you. The Lord is saying, I'm not whistling Dixie. This is life or death. And he wants us to choose life, so he's helping us. He's encouraging us to choose life in every step of the way. He will not make the choice for us. But he's showing us in truth what happens on both sides. Once we make a decision in truth for all time, if we are people of integrity and truly belong to the Lord, we will not depart from Him. We won't fall away. But we do know that many will fall away from the faith. We do know that. Folks, this is agenda. That was agenda number one. That is nothing like agenda number two. Agenda number one we did speak about tonight. Agenda number two, we're going to speak about the next time I talk, which will likely be tomorrow if Heidi is not on. Tatum is coming on tomorrow morning. So we'll cue her in as soon as we catch her on COT. All right? Agenda number one happened a long time ago. Agenda number two has been underway since Christ. 
But agenda number two is much worse than agenda number one. It's much worse than these things showing up all over the place. It is much worse than hybrids killing humanity all over the place. It's much worse than the destruction of the earth by flood and people drowning to death. It really is much worse. Agenda number two is much worse, but listen with all things. You have overcome all things, but only through the blood of the Lamb. You have not overcome anything outside of Christ. If you do not live within Christ, you, you do not abide in him. To abide in Christ is to stay within him, to live within him. You don't abide in him if you've come in to visit. It's different than making Christ your abode and he make his abode within you. It's different. Tomorrow, Lord willing, at about uh, 7 or 8 p.m., we're going to start talking about Agenda 2. That's when we talk about a certain species of E.T. that you call E.T. that didn't come from space. We're going to talk about their true nature, too. It's declassified. Isn't that funny? Declassified. That's a funny term. How can something like that be declassified if it were never classified? It was classified. Now, declassified. So then their nature can be discussed. We'll speak about that. But most importantly, we're going to speak about how through Christ you have been protected all this time. You see, they can't do what they want to do. But if you step outside of Christ, for those who fall away, they will certainly be damned. They cannot do what they want to do. And what they're trying to do with humanity, you may not believe it yourself. You're going to say, well, I didn't hear anything like this. They have lost their minds, and it does deal with the three unclean spirits. The three. And why are they always in threes? We're going to talk about crash retrievals that were real. But why is everything in threes? Everything is always in threes. Why? A three ring what? Is not easily broken. That's why. That's why it's in threes. It's a principle by God the Father. That's why. It's simply it. I don't get into the numbers like seven means this, two means this, and all that. I don't get into those things. But I do get into the principles of God. It's kind of like gravity, right? You don't see gravity. You don't know about it. But it works anyway. A three ring core is not easily broken. That's also a principle of our Father. It works anyway, just like sowing and reaping. You don't have to know about it nor understand it. It's working always, right? It always worked. That's why you find things in threes like that. It also identifies them when you find them in threes. And they're fugitives. If you only knew. We'll talk about some of that tomorrow, but I can tell you this technology is an extension of them. And what they're doing with technology, we help to provide half of that. There's no way we can make it without Christ because we have been we have been active participants in the actual work of the fallen. In a lot of cases we have helped them. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for completing your task because we wouldn't make it without you. Thank you, Lord. Folks, I'll join you all tomorrow. I will do that. Remember, Pastor Scott will be on at 3 p.m. tomorrow. You guys be there at 3 p.m. 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tomorrow before we get into agenda number two. Can you do that? I'll be in there as well. I'm going to be in there as well. God bless you, Pastor Scott. Angela, thank you for the talk this morning. And God bless each and every one of you. I'll join everybody tomorrow. God bless. And that comes from the eternal life giver. Hmm? Not the doctrine of the dead. There is but one doctrine. Those are the words of our Lord. And I'm telling you, these things await you.
through every crack and crevice and they are relentless and they will not stop they won't go backward they're doing a permanent work they're all trying they're working on agenda two and most people don't even know about it but at least you know about it is everybody clear on agenda number one not by me, but by scripture. How many of you know that God formed the crooked serpent? How many of you know what Leviathan really is? Most people don't know what Leviathan really is. I'm not here to contest with you, but Isaiah did not say it was the same thing most people think it is. The crooked serpent is also the old serpent called the devil and Satan. Leviathan is a description of the works, how it happens in the earth. See, in agenda number two, in number one, the dragon actually did have power. In agenda number two, he had to hand the beast his power, his seat, and great authority because he could not do it himself. Why in the world would the dragon give the beast his power seeking great authority if he had a power seeking great authority because of the realm change you may not know this but when God destroyed this earth right by water everything began to change and Jesus sealed that change Satan was cast out he cannot freely come back into this domain like he did so what does he do he copies himself in the earth and then he hands over his power seat and great authority. Do you guys see how that works? Jesus said the prince of this world is cast out. Now is the judgment of this world, Jesus says. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. Well, where did he go? Where did he go? Cast out where? See, he can affect you. He can affect you like you think. Through your imagination, he affects you. He is held outside of you. And that thing still remains your enemy. You will no longer see him as an enemy, but you will befriend him because of what he created. Hmm? This is what's happening. The second agenda is sent to corrupt the spiritual seed of man. And when you know it, the Lord said, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And in the mind are physical objects. The experiences you've had in your life that affect you every single day of your life. There are things that have happened to you. You thought that a person did something to you. You blamed it on a person. And you lived in error since that time. They know what they're doing. Is it not corrupting a person when the Lord says, We war not against the flesh, but of principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places? And the reason why I say it's the Lord is because all things are inspired by the Holy Spirit, which is given by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And it tells you to say things of Him, anything within Christ, it will give you to say. So then who did it come from? It came from the Word of God. Don't you know when God speaks right now, it is Christ. Don't you know that? Jesus is the Word of God made flesh and dwelt among men. So then when God speaks, Jesus has spoken. Do you understand? The words of our God is Christ Jesus. His Word died for you. The same Word that doomed you died for you. And was raised again under a new covenant. Now you're covered by the blood. The blood that was spilt out of the word upon your life that you will not be condemned by what condemned you in the first place that you may finally find life your soul is being redeemed but your flesh is kaput what is the world interested in right now keeping the flesh as fit as can be and living for a long time replacing old parts and all this stuff they teach the propaganda of a long life to enjoy what? To enjoy the world. 
not a long life that you may actually work miracles in the earth or anything like that. No, to live a long life that you may enjoy the world. This is what they're teaching you. To do everything you can to enjoy the world. But the only way to enjoy the world is to be a servant of the system. And only those who are the best servants can enjoy. And to find favor, well then you, you, you really can't have Christ. Because those same ones who help, who are the feet of these kingdoms, they're the foundation of the kingdoms. They always have the greater influence over mankind. And if they do that, they're going to see you from a mile away and inspire people to give you the cold shoulder. It's happened to you in your life and you cannot deny it. You were the one that was plucked out of your job. You were the one they wrote the letter to. You were the one unfortunate things concerning the world only that happened to you. Haven't you found out yet anybody of the world is not on your side? Haven't you found that out? If they are of the world, they're really not on your side. Haven't you found that out? And you can't point at a person. Because if you point at one person, it's the same thing will come through another. Have you ever had somebody say something to you and then they're out of your life? Three years later, you meet somebody else who says the exact thing the other person said. And it gets to you. These are spirits you're dealing with. Things that walk among you. You see, in the Bible it says, <laughs> uh, these, these men of old, have crept in and you weren't aware of them they feast with you they're walking among you they have infiltrated everything and you really don't know what is what now I don't suggest you know a lot of people say well yes you know they could have clones I'm not interested in clones I'm not interested in a lot of things because your true danger is how these entities and influence your mind you're the one I'm concerned about how they get into your head how they make you waste your time running in circles how that the Christian populace can't seem to find deliverance why can the Christian populace not find deliverance because they have adopted too many doctrines. There's only one correct doctrine. And it didn't come from the mouth of men. My goodness. But all the doctrines most do exercise. Are passed down through the grapevine. Through dead people. No. Your doctrine should come. From a living one. Who is Christ Jesus don't live by a doctrine of the dead but the doctrine of the living following them you're following their influence their inspiration all these great men that you call great in the earth that are inspired like all these scientists and Einstein and all these folks that are celebrated they all admitted they were inspired by something that was not God and of all the knowledge they had and of their lives devotion to what they did what did they actually produce let me tell you what happens because humanity in those great people will always be set up as innocent in your eyesight these things these spirits have been here for a long time we're not here for a long time right so then you have one person like Einstein you give him something. He devotes his life to it. He makes it plain so that other people can see it. So he's the one handing it out. The other people grab hold of it and take it to another level. They too are inspired and controlled to take it in different directions. All the while, these things have equated to weaponry. Is what they have, what it has come down to. Control mechanisms. Did it actually go into the... Listen, we're making breakthroughs in space, in the earth... And we can't cure cancer. 
You know, in 1993, there was a rumor that there had been a cure for cancer. And there was a fight in Congress. I mean, a real fight in Congress. A real one. In 1993, no one ever heard a piece of it since. In fact, that was the exact time all these pharmaceutical industries started coming out with everything. Right? They don't want you to fix you. Part of agenda number two is that a person lived their life thinking they're going to be delivered. So they devote their life for that cause that they're going to be delivered. That somehow some great thing is coming out of what they're doing. That's a strong delusion and it's only a tiny piece of it that is amplified through marketing of television, the reality TV that you watch, all these reality shows that make immorality commonplace and disgusting things commonplace. All these things are commonplace so you have been made numb to their true works. Therefore no spiritual discernment concerning the truth. You cannot love the works of your enemy because all physical elements of it have been hidden from the eyes of mankind. In agenda number two, you're going to see the warnings that the Lord gave. I'm going to talk about species. But right now, I'm going to tell you this. You need to go back to the drawing board on dinosaur bones. There's proof of giants in the earth of both man and beasts all over the place. They don't mind showing you the beasts that were too big. And they've come up with all sorts of explanations. Well, this happened 40 million years ago when the oxygen was all over the earth. And the earth was at one point under a canopy of water, too. Because there were books written about it. There's a turquoise set of stones with writing in them. Now the only way that can happen is that the writing, the way the writing was done, it actually settled in to the crystal itself as it was forming. And it takes a long time for that process to finish because the writing is compressed, but enough where you can make it out. Now figure that one out. Sumerian text being the oldest? No. Listen, if the world has a consensus on something like that, they're pushing an agenda. And I'm telling you that the second agenda is underway. Sadly enough, and if people can't even see this, the real world. They say, well, I live in the real world. No, you don't. You live in a designed world that keeps you captive. And that's why you're not free. Everything is designed by mankind carefully. They're inspired to build mechanisms of control, which we call entertainment. Oh, you don't think entertainment is a form of control? Really? If I say gargoyle, what is your reference for the word? What is your reference for that word? Huh? What is it? What is it? If I say vacation, what is your reference for that word? What comes into your mind? Something mankind has given you. Think about it. When you are scared of a noise you never heard before, what comes into your mind? Every scary situation causes an emotional feedback problem in your flesh. Listen, these things are masters of flesh. You need to understand that. They're, they're, they're also masters at biology. They can manipulate God's creation, but they have lost their spiritual authority. So they really can't do anything to you concerning spiritual things. But you let them in and you let them do things because you're not walking in the spirit. See, when you walk after those things of the flesh and do mind those things of the flesh, guess what you're doing? You're